Hello, sixth graders. This is Mrs. Gabriel. We're going to be talking about classifying matter as an element, compound, or mixture today. You have a sheet in front of you that's going to help you go over your notes today and to keep you organized and focus on what is most important. Um, if you would first look at the review, um, please think about what you learned in class on Monday. It says a blank is the basic, smallest basic unit of matter. And when two or more atoms are bonded together, a blank is formed. Please take a moment to answer those two questions. If you said that an atom is the smallest basic unit of matter, you are correct. And then when two or more atoms are bonded together, hopefully you remembered that a molecule is formed. You're going to follow along with the notes for the next portion. Atoms combine to make three different things. We have elements, compounds, and mixtures. You should be writing these on your PowerPoint notes at this time. An element, um, we're going to focus on each one a little bit more um, specifically. You can see the example gold is considered an element, and you'll see why in just a moment. Dry ice is considered a compound. Notice that the atoms in a gold molecule look different than the atoms in dry ice, and then soil would be a mixture. Elements um, are pure substances that cannot be separated into simpler substances by physical or chemical means. That means that if I break down a gold atom or gold molecule, I would get gold, and if I break down gold, I get more gold, and if I break down gold, I just get smaller and smaller gold. The periodic table of elements shows us all the different types of elements that exist. If you look over on the sidewall by the front door when you came in, I also have a periodic table of elements that goes into detail about anything that is an element. Everything on Earth is made up of a combination of these elements. Now, when I combine two or more different types of elements by a chemical bond, I get a compound. Again, you should be writing on your note sheet at this time. So they're pure substances. They're made of elements in a very specific ratio that are always the same. That means, for example, H2O is two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. If I add or take away any atoms, I no longer have water. NaCl is considered or called sodium chloride. That is basic table salt. And then CO2 is carbon dioxide, which is the air that we breathe out. Those are all called chemical formulas. And compounds can only be separated by chemical means, not physically, meaning I can't just break them apart. A chemical reaction has to take place to break down a compound. In a mixture, there's a combination of two or more pure substances, but they are not chemically combined. Substances are held together by a physical force, not chemical, meaning they're just mixed together or one is dissolved in the other, but the properties stay the same. No chemical change has taken place. When it says that its properties are retained, it means that it's still the same thing. So if I make um, sugar water, the water still has its properties, and although the sugar has dissolved into the water, I still know sugar is there and its properties haven't changed because the water would taste sweet. I can separate mixtures by physical means. I can melt them, crush them, dissolve them, or separate them. We'll talk about those in more detail tomorrow. I'll give you just another second to finish filling out your note sheet. Now I want to look more closely about what makes a mixture and a compound different. So you'll notice on your note sheet you have the same graphic organizer that I have up on this sheet, or on this PowerPoint, excuse me. So let's take a look at the composition of mixtures and compounds. What that means, composition is how something is made up. In a mixture, there is a variable composition. It means you can vary the amount of substance in any mixture. So if I have a mixture of trail mix and I really like M&Ms, I can add extra M&Ms. Or I could pick out raisins, say if I don't want the raisins. 
I could change the amount and it would still be considered trail mix. But in a compound, it has something called a definite composition. You can't vary the amount of each element in a compound or else it's no longer that compound. So thinking back to H2O, I couldn't take away one of the hydrogen atoms or else it would no longer be water. Talking about if mixtures and compounds are joined or not. In a mixture, the different substances are not chemically joined together. There, there's no chemical reaction that has taken place to combine them. But in a compound, the different elements are chemically joined together. If you wanted to summarize those on your sheet and just say not chemically joined um, for mixtures and chemically joined for compounds, that would be okay. For the properties of each, I have done this for you. The properties in a mixture, each substance in the mixture keeps its own properties, whereas in a compound, the properties are different from the elements it contains. Meaning in H2O, hydrogen is different than oxygen. Another example is table salt. Table salt is made of sodium and chloride, or chlorine. Both of those elements separately are very poisonous, but when I combine sodium and chlorine together and get sodium chloride, table salt, it is very safe for you to eat. But separately, those, those elements are not safe. When looking at a mixture for separation, each substance is easily separated from the mixture. But in a compound, it can only be separated using a chemical reaction. I also did that one for you as well. Some examples of a mixture are the air that you breathe, seawater, and most rocks. A compound, some examples are water, which is H2O, sodium di or carbon dioxide, excuse me, the air that you breathe out, magnesium oxide, and then sodium chloride. So now we're going to um, do some review very quick before seeing if you can identify from a series of photos. It says, tell if each photo represents an item is composed of an element, compound, or mixture. So if you're looking at the back of your note sheet, you're going to put a review at the top so you can use those to help you when you're identifying the pictures. Remember that an element contains just one type of atom. It can have many atoms, but they're all the same. So an example would be, oxygen or carbon or gold or silver or platinum. A compound contains two or more different atoms joined together. That would be water, salt, sugar, um, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. Those are all compounds. And then a mixture contains two or more different substances that are only physically joined together, not chemically. A mixture can contain both elements and compounds. So let's take a look at the first example. When you see rocks, are they an element, a compound, or a mixture? Would you please predict if rocks are one of those things on your sheet? So under prediction, you should be writing element, compound, or mixture. And let's see if you are correct. And please make sure you write down the correct answer. Rocks are a mixture. They're a mix of several different minerals and they're combined together physically, not chemically. What about copper? Please predict if copper is an element, compound, or mixture. Raise your hand if you think copper is an element. Raise your hand if you think it is a compound. And raise your hand if you think it is a mixture. Copper is an element. It can be found on the periodic table of elements, which means it is a pure substance. Let's look at jelly beans. Hopefully this will be an easy one. Go ahead and predict if jelly beans are an element, compound, or mixture. Raise your hand if you think jelly beans are an element, meaning you can find it on the periodic table of elements. Raise your hand if you think it's a compound. And raise your hand if you think it's a mixture. Jelly beans are a mixture. Please write that down. What about table sugar? Go ahead and make your prediction. What 
Raise your hand if you think it's an element. Raise your hand if you think table sugar is a compound. And raise your hand if you think it is a mixture. The correct answer is a compound. Um, the C12H22O11 is the, um, the chemical formula. And that's actually how CNH sugar got its um, name. Element, compound, or mixture for a diamond. Go ahead and make your prediction. Raise your hand if you think it's an element, compound, or mixture. A diamond, this is a tricky one, is an element. A diamond is made of carbon. Um, over time, carbon is pressed or pressure under pressure and pressed down under heat and pressure, and it creates a diamond, which is considered carbon. Element, compound, or mixture for tea. Please make your prediction. Raise your hand if you think tea is an element. Raise your hand if you think tea is a compound. And raise your hand if you think tea is a mixture. Tea is a mixture. What about table salt? Go ahead and make your prediction. How many of you think element, compound, or mixture? Table salt is a compound. Remember that is sodium chloride. Sodium and chlorine are poisonous, but put them together, bond them together, and you get table salt. What about neon gas? Go ahead and make your prediction for neon gas. Is it an element, compound, or mixture? Please raise your hand if you think it's an element. Raise your hand if you think it's a compound. And raise your hand if you think it's a mixture. Neon is an element. You can find it on the periodic table of elements. What about a salad? Go ahead and make your prediction. This time share your answer with your table. And salad is a mixture. What about pure water? So pure H2O has no other um, minerals or substances mixed in. Share your prediction with your table. Pure water is a compound. The water that you drink is not pure. It has things like fluoride mixed in with it. What about aluminum, like an aluminum can or aluminum foil that you use at home? Is that an element, compound, or mixture? Go ahead and predict. Share your prediction with your table. Aluminum is an element. What about lemonade? Think about what all goes in lemonade. You have lemon juice, water, sugar. Is it an element, compound, or mixture? If you said mixture, you are correct. We have two to go. Go ahead and predict what you think silver is. Is silver an element, compound, or mixture? Share your thought with your table. And if you said that silver is an element, you are correct. It has the abbreviation AG on the periodic table of elements. And then the final one, sand. Is sand an element, compound, or mixture? Maybe think about what sand um, is before it becomes sand to help you predict this. Share with your table. And if you said sand is a mixture, you are correct. Remember, sand is just crushed up rock, and we know that rock is a mixture as well. Um, hopefully, this gives you a good overview on element compounds and mixtures. Um, on Thursday, we're going to go into talking about how we can separate mixtures. This can be glued in your notebook. Thank you.